Welcome everybody on the Lights on Data Show, live on location here at Gardner Data Analytics Summit. My name is George Freekan, I'm here with Sanjeev Mohan. Yes. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Hey. George and I go way back. <laughs> yes, we do, you do. I, we've had the pleasure of having you on the Lights on Data Show as well. Yes. And now it's incredible to uh, see you again in person. We kind of run thank into you. each other at yeah. uh, all these events and yes. uh, very honored to have this interview with you. Likewise, I love hanging out with you and Diana. Yes. So, too bad she's not here. I know, site, I know, but, I know, you know, I know. Next time, yeah, yeah next there'll time. be other occasions. Awesome. Well, uh, Sanjeev, you have so much experience in the industry, and now as the founder of uh, Sanjumo, uh, you are doing a lot of great consulting, from what I understand, and you're interacting with a lot of companies. It feels like 2025 is the year of agentic AI. What are your thoughts on it? How, how do you think it's um, it's shaping up so far? So my big purpose of coming to this conference this year is to understand from end users, the consumers, what are they doing with agents? I have spoken a lot about agents. In fact, agents was uh, one of my trends in January of 2024 for last year. So, so this is, for me, this is not new. But you're right, it's got so much traction that I think we may have over-indexed right. into it. Right. And now Wait. every single person is saying, oh, I'm doing agentic uh, work. So I, I think we need to rein it in. We don't want to enter an era where we are talking about a technology that business does not understand mm -hmm. and they're not adopting mm -hmm. because the repercussions of uh, over-hyping a technology uh, are not good. Right, that's a very good point because we don't want to do things just for the sake of doing them or just right. because the competitors Correct. are doing it. We need Correct. to have our own scope and driver to right. invest into the technology. And of course, we also need to have that foundation in place before we're uh, yes. moving a step into agentic AI and we're not going to expect that agentic AI will be introduced in the company and save everything that we do, Yeah. right? We still need that foundation layer in so, place. So, no questions about it. We need the foundation layer, but that is such a trillion dollar question. It's like, like we need to fix our data quality, absolutely. Right. We need uh, trust, we need observability, we need cataloging, we need annotation. The list goes on and on. And some people may say even master data management, lineage. Where do we say that, uh, let's try to, to rethink, think in a different way. Mm -hmm. Because if we take the traditional approach, mm -hmm. we will never get there. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this because for the last 40 years, mm -hmm. I've been in this business trying to fix data quality and all these things, and we never really have achieved that that right, bar, right? right? Yeah. So now if we say, let's get our data ready, well, when will the data be ready? Will we miss the AI bus? Mm -hmm. So the question is, can we now start thinking, maybe I can use AI to go read my data and not worry about some of the mechanics of how we did mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. traditionally. Mm -hmm. I like that. And do, do you find there are solutions out there already that we can leverage, AI-enabled solutions that we can leverage to pinpoint where yeah. the errors are, fast-track us on yeah. that foundation layer so then we can implement cool technology like Agentic AI? So I 100% believe we have the technology now and it's getting better every single day. Yeah, You can even see right now, uh, I've seen non-technical people go into uh, products like Cursor or Replit and create a whole application in a matter of days. I have seen research people, competitive intelligence people, go and produce amazing content in a matter of minutes, what would have taken them weeks. It's already there. Now the question is, is how do we harness it and try to get some ROI out of it? Because we can experiment till the cows come home. <laughs> right? right, but but the businesses are looking for some tangible benefits. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit of of crossing that that uh, chasm, mm -hmm. which needs to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but the technology is there. Now, okay, this is a touchy subject yeah. and question. Yeah, I already know where you're going. Yeah, yeah. with with the impact on yes. people, right? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, we're we're yeah. uh, mind melding here. Yes, we're reading so, our uh, each other's minds. But <laughs> just for the audience' yeah. sake, is yeah, how will this impact the workforce and uh, right. people's jobs? And uh, right. so, I, I want to give a few uh, examples of of history and where we've been. Around 1800, uh, 
the vast majority, 80 to 90% of the US population was in the business of farming. By 1900s, that number had come down to 40%. By 2000, only 3% of the U.S. population was actually farming. Now, you know what the funny thing is? Mm. In the, this 225-year period, you know what was the unemployment? It stayed steady at around 5%, unemployment. So, and, and of course, you know, vast number of people came into the, this country and kids were born. What jobs are they doing? In 1800s, Half the farmers did not know that 100 years from now, we'll be working on railways and building cars. Right. And then in 1900s, half of them did not know that we will be doing data modeling. I'm just uh, yeah. being facetious here. Yeah. So my point is that, that we are, our concerns are valid with job losses because there is going to be a disruption in every single job, no matter whether it's creative or it's physical. But like history teaches us, new jobs will be created. Now people ask me, oh, what do you mean? Like, What new jobs will be created? Well, how do I know? It's like, did we know in 1800 that mm -hmm. we'd be working the railroads and mm -hmm. telephone exchange? Uh, so how do we know? But we have to, to have this conviction that uh, we lose some entry level jobs, but those people will do some more creative work. So that's what I believe in. Yeah. And time will tell. Definitely. And uh, I'm an optimist myself, too, so yeah. my hope is that you're right. But we'll see. We'll, we'll need to yeah. ride this wave together and uh, make the best yeah. of it and see yeah. how we can uh, yes. uh, go forward. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank well, you so much for having me on your show again. Yeah. Thank so, you so much, Sanjeev, and always welcome. a pleasure. Thank you. All right. See you. Bye, everyone.